It's been a weird, wild, and wonderful year on this channel, so to end off the decade, I wanted to finish on a high note. So today, we're going to go through how I decorated my first ever Christmas tree using fluorescent genetically modified bacteria and naturally bioluminescent algae. And while I decorate, I want to take this opportunity to go over some of my favorite projects from the past year and talk a little bit about all the exciting things I've got planned for the new year. I didn't grow up celebrating Christmas, and I'm about as far from religious as you can get, but as an adult, I've come to absolutely love the holiday season. It's such a fun amalgamation of traditions from more than half a dozen cultures, each centered around good food, giving nice things to people you like, making everything look pretty, and making fantastic adult beverages. Honestly, what's not to like? But up until now, I never got to decorate a tree, and this year I wanted to change that. So I picked up this beautiful tree and started planning out my decorations. Now, of course, because I wanted to decorate using living organisms, only about half of what I'd originally planned ended up working out. But the end result still looked stunning, and now I've set a great baseline to build on for next year. There are two main things I'll be using for decorating. The first is a collection of E. coli, which have been genetically modified to produce a range of colorful proteins. I'm not going to go into too much detail about how I made those modifications, because I've already filmed a whole video which will be coming out in the new year going through that whole process. But the TLDR is this. My friend sent me a dozen pieces of DNA that when you put them into bacteria, make them produce one of 12 colorful proteins. I used NEB turbo cells, which is a special strain of E. coli that grow really fast and are particularly easy to modify. To get the DNA into the cells, I mixed some of the DNA with some freshly growing bacteria and quickly heated and rapidly cooled them in a process called heat shocking to force the DNA into the cells. Once inside, the DNA starts to run, just like a computer program when you put a CD into a computer, which... I realize in another decade that reference isn't going to make any sense. Then the bacteria were plated in petri dishes filled with a special media that kills off any unmodified cells and lets the modified ones grow. I also added some activated charcoal to the media to make it jet black and the colors really pop. Here you can see a selection of the different bacteria after they've been modified. Some colors are obviously way more vibrant than others when you shine a UV or blue light on them, and some of them show up as colorful colonies under white light. In the follow-up video that'll come out next month, we'll go through this whole process in a lot more detail, and honestly, I'm really excited. I've been wanting to make this video all year, and finally managed to get this working consistently so I can finally do that. Turns out, almost all of the materials that had been sent to me for an earlier video were complete garbage, so it's taken me this long to replace all the stuff I'd gotten for free with proper reagents from trusted suppliers. The other organism I'll be using for my decorations is a species of glowing marine algae called Pyrocystis fusiformis. These are probably my all-time favorite microbe. At night, when the algae are disturbed, they release a bright flash of blue light. Sometimes these little critters bloom to massive quantities in the ocean, and make the waves glow and leave a glowing wake behind boats. They work like biological glow sticks and spend all day growing the glowing compounds, and when they're disturbed, release them in a flash of blue light. Most likely, this is an anti-predation mechanism to keep fish from eating them. Originally, I'd also planned on using an E. coli that had been modified to bioluminesce, as well as a species of bioluminescent fungus, but unfortunately my stocks of both organisms were super dead, so I've ordered more of each and will cover both in videos in the new year. To actually make my ornaments, I picked up some empty glass ornament balls, as well as a lot of silicon tubing. The balls will be filled with agar, and the bacteria will be spread on it to give little bursts of color, while the tubing will be wrapped around the tree and the algae will be piped around it to agitate them and make them glow. In combination with some traditional ornaments, I think I might just have the coolest tree around. Before I could fill the glass orbs, they had to be sterilized to make sure that only the bacteria I want grow. I did this by first taping over the little hole in the ornament lids, and giving each a tinfoil hat to prevent stuff getting in while they're being sterilized. Everything was then loaded into the autoclave to sterilize it. After that, I mixed up some LB agar, and again, autoclaved everything to sterilize it. Before the LB had completely cooled, I added the selection antibiotic to it, and then poured a little bit of each into the orbs and let them cool so the gel could set. When the orbs were set, I inoculated them with about 75 microliters worth of bacteria solution that I'd prepared the day before and let grow overnight. I'd chosen some of my favorite colors for this and didn't use all 12. Then just swirled everything around to coat the surface and popped the orbs into the incubator to grow. In this shot, you can see about a bazillion little vials underneath the orbs. Originally, I'd planned on inoculating and stringing these up as more decorations, but they just never ended up as vibrant as I wanted, so I chose to omit them. And that's basically it. Once these had grown for a few days, the orbs had taken on some really vibrant colors, and many glowed nicely under the blacklight. I chose the ones that looked the best, and will use those to decorate my tree. Some of the colors weren't as vibrant as I wanted, so those got added to the disposal pile to be dealt with after the holidays. 
As you can imagine, you can't just throw out containers of GMO bacteria, so they're first autoclaved to kill them, at which point they're inert and safe to be thrown out normally. But now, without further ado, I can finally start decorating my tree. Since I decided to invest in a proper pine tree and not that plastic garbage, I'm going to be making full use of the tree once the holidays are over. Pine is actually a wonderful flavor and can be used to season food, make awesome drinks and jams that go with all sorts of cuisine. So to make sure it's not a health risk since I'm literally hanging E. coli on it, all the orbs were wiped down with alcohol before I hung them to make sure there was no bacteria on the outside. Though my sterile technique was pretty good so that shouldn't happen anyway. Also, the needles will be cleaned thoroughly to remove any pesticides before they're used for food. So while I decorate, let's talk about past and future projects. Since I just mentioned turning my pine tree into food, I think it's a great time to make an exciting announcement. I've started a second channel! A couple months ago I made a video about one of the best meals I'd ever tasted, and the response was really terrific. But after that I decided that if I'm going to continue making food videos, they need their own channel. So if you're interested, head over to The Taste Emporium and subscribe. There aren't any videos up yet, but I've started filming and editing several, and will start releasing them in January. So if you liked my last food video, hang on to your seat and be sure to subscribe, because the recipes I'm working on might just blow your taste buds off. I've got a whole new filming set, which you'll see in upcoming videos on this channel as well, and I'm super excited to put it all to good use. Earlier this year, I made a video which has set the stage for a few videos that are coming up very soon. This is my cloud chamber, which uses a cryogenic plate and alcohol vapor to visualize radiation as it passes through it. As I mentioned in that video, I'm working on a whole series delving into radiation and particle physics, and all the ways we can detect and use it, and I'm really excited because the next two videos in that series are coming up soon. As a sneak peek, this is my first of two gamma ray detectors I'm building, and I've already used it to detect a cosmic ray decaying inside the detector. This first pulse is from a cosmic ray, and the second is the particle it decayed into. Before we talk more about projects, let's check in with the tree. At this point, I've hung most of the orbs and the tubing and lots of little lights and ribbons. In the dark with a black light, the orbs look stunning, and best of all, since some of the colors glow in response to colors like green or blue light, the color-changing fairy lights make them really pop as they cycle through their color patterns. Nestled into the branches, I think these look amazing. The final touch is to circulate the algae. I ordered the algae from a company I've linked to in the description, and have had them growing under a grow light for several weeks. They only glow during their night cycle, so if I set things up before then, I won't waste any of the glowing chemicals by having them released too early. First, I sterilized a jar with some alcohol, and once dry, I filled it with some synthetic seawater that the algae is grown in. I used the same peristaltic pump and silicon fermenter lid that I used in my ultrasonic alcohol video, though of course, they were cleaned well first. I plumbed everything up and first pumped some plain seawater through all the tubing to make sure that it was moist before I introduced the algae. Then, once everything was circulating nicely, I added the algae solution to the jar. The nice thing is that the algae are pretty heavy and have a tendency to sink to the bottom, so when I turn the pump on, they'll get immediately sucked up the tube and be sent on a little roller coaster ride around my tree. Before I kill the lights and start taking pictures to show you how amazing this looks, there's a couple more projects I want to talk about quickly. The first is one that many of you have asked me about approximately a billion times, and that's the spider silk project. Early last year I announced what I said would be one of my biggest and longest term projects that I've been working on for a while, which is to engineer a strain of yeast to produce artificial spider silk. But as you probably noticed from the lack of videos, it's been a very difficult process. At this point, after dozens and dozens of hours of failed lab work, we've completely abandoned the original plan of trying to isolate the silk genes from spiders and then put them into yeast. Instead, we've gone for a totally synthetic alternative. We've designed a totally new silk which doesn't exist in nature, and had a company print and manufacture the DNA for us. No more needing to build the DNA piece by piece. For all of 800 bucks, the company has done all of the work for us and has made the DNA that's immediately ready to be put into yeast. And I'm super excited to announce that they're finished with that process and it's currently in the mail on the way to me. So stay tuned for an update video in the next month or so where we'll go through that design process, what the new plan is, and maybe, if we're lucky, even have our first batch of synthetic spider silk. And finally, before we wrap this up, I can't not talk about the neuron experiment. For those that missed it, earlier this month I released the first part of my attempts to grow human neurons on a homemade electrode array and connect them up to a computer. The response on that video was really amazing, and it's led to setting up some really awesome collaborations which I'm excited to tell you all about in the new year. It'll probably take at least six months until the next part of that series is ready, but I think if things go to plan, it may be one of the coolest videos of the year. If we can get some signals out of the neurons this time, we're looking at connecting them up to a little robot and have it drive it around. 
Personally, I just want to see if I can get them to pass butter, but that's probably a bit ambitious. So stay tuned, as that one is going to be a lot of fun. Okay, back to the tree so we can wrap this up. The glow from the algae is very bright in person, but it can be tricky to capture the way it really looks even with my nicest camera. So first, here's a long exposure of the tree without the pump on, and then with the pump turned on. You can see that all the tubing lights up with a beautiful blue glow while they're being circulated. But to give you an idea of how this actually looks in person, here's some footage of when the pump is turned on for the first time of the night, and the algae are still fully charged and ready. You can see that it's not a consistent glow around the tubing, but instead little twinkles of glow that move through the tubing. I couldn't capture this happening around the whole tree, but imagine that this is what the whole tree looks like in person. It's honestly even more beautiful than I imagined when I first planned this out. So that's pretty much it. My tree came out beautifully, and I look very forward to next year's. I know this will be coming out after Christmas, so I hope you all had an amazing holiday season, and I wish you all a very happy new year. Here's to another year of science, and I look very forward to seeing you all again in the new decade.